Musan. When the body changes its position with its respect to its surrounding, is called motion. And there also there is motion. A body is said to be in motion when it changes its position with its respect to its surrounding. My name is Pratik Sakar and I am 18 years old. Uh, we are four brother and sister. And if every money will spend on me, then how how they will survive? Uh, girls or women are uh, bounded within the four walls. And just uh, married women also, they are only regarded as a machine of bearing children or uh, within the house only they are kept. This generation we can't change. Older generation we can't change them now. But new generation, we can give education. If someone helped me in my life, if then, I don't know what happened tomorrow. After married, daughter only bounded to uh, do their household work, not more than that. We have to give equal right to daughter and son. I think maybe I will be a doctor but due to my family condition I don't think it is possible but I will try to be a doctor and to serve every poor, poor people of my country Nepal. Nepal is developing country. There is low literature rate. Moreover, the condition of Nepali women is rather measurable in comparison to the globe. Nepali women are living in 17th century. The culture has swallowed them wholly so that they cannot change the culture to their babies. They have lived in prison at home. But nowadays, women can also do things like men. We must gain a uh, right in property. I like being a woman. I can be equal to the men. Women can do anything. In Nepal, there is a culture of superstition. Superstition is the faith to enter material strict things. The husband use them as a servant without money and as a warm material. Women cannot talk to people uh, that they like because social members will criticize them. Women in Nepal are laughing with no happiness. 
Hi, my name is Savina Pukrel and I am 14 years old. My hobby is to read, play, listen to music. Yes, then I, um, my aim is to be a staff nurse in my life. Um, I was the third in my class. I am going to school to get knowledge. To, uh, to get knowledge, to get knowledge. How do you feel about being educated? I've been very, very proudly. How would you feel if you could not be educated? Uh, if I was not be educated, I'm same like animal. No? That uh, animal, they don't know such things. We should not go this side, that side. I want to say that um, woman, woman should also educate. Some of them, they are not educated, no? their father, mother, they told they will go in another house, why to educate the woman? But if woman, edu if woman has educated, they can do um, such things which men can do. My name is Olga Murray and I live in Sausalito. California half the year and Kathmandu half the year. We have educated by this time literally thousands of children. I first came to Nepal in 1984. Uh, at that time, most children actually didn't go to school. Uh, it was it was a pretty feudal society. I saw these children who, they were the happiest children I'd ever seen and they had nothing. They were so poor, they had rags for clothes and they were dirty and they but they were so joyful and I was so impressed with that. And what most of them wanted to do was go to school. And I went to an orphanage and I said, how much does it cost to send a kid to college? And he said, $300 a year. And I said, I'll take five. So it's wonderful to be with the program for 25 years when you can see how the children develop and, and uh, their transformation. It's very satisfying. And being around 25 years for 25 years, you can see them develop from these, you know, frail little scared kids onto young, strong, healthy young men and women, educated. It's very satisfying work. So I always say the last 25 years of my life have been the happiest, I think, because I found this to do. I think, I don't know whether I would have access or not. I think so because like my uh, family situation was so poor that I used to be like a beggar girl where like street children or something like that and then after that like um, after I uh, went to homes uh, in organization then like my father uh, died um. but um, I heard that like people just uh, did like you know murder him and something like that but I don't know I was so small when I came uh, in this organization, I was, I think, four and a half years old. So <clears throat> I don't know that much uh, about my past life, but as long as I know that uh, uh, before I came to the, <clears throat> um, this home organization, I was like a street children begging for money, and then there was no school, my <clears throat> no food, good food for uh, for me to eat. Um, and what do you want to do now that you're going to school? Um, actually I'm studying social work now, so I want to be, uh, be a social worker in future as well, doing the same work what this, our mom is doing for us, and, um, yeah, I want to look after children, and you know, maybe I'll find good organization like this, and then work for it. Hey, Pari izamuna, ezamuna ko petaima mana kamana. Ahoy, lahoy. Okay, my name is Dhruva Kumar Vijayal, but my nickname is Baba. Since seven years, my name is Baba. So I live in Nagarkot since nearly eight years now. I know this old generation must change, but I'm sure this new generation will be change because they will be educated. So major problem is they have not have educated education in the countryside. So it's quite hard to change women. Yeah, a few women they can change, but not all women can't. But new generation, new now 21 century, this generation will be changed something. 
Men and women, they could keep the same, maybe. I lost my leg in 2008, February 16. We were in Anafurno. So that time I lost leg with my Holland group. And this leg is both sponsored by German friends, from German friend. His name is Stefan Max. And he paid me this 45,000 for this leg. Since three years I've worried this leg. So it's, thanks for him, Max, Stephen Max. And now I hear one leg from Holland, 9,000 euro. Then I can walk again mountain. I wish to go mountain one day with that leg. My name is uh, Pramadasha, and I'm involved in Sati and Burns Violence Survivors Nepal. I'm the husband who sometimes pour kerosene on the woman and burn her alive. Uh, there have also been cases where uh, a woman and her children have been sleeping and the husband has come and poured acid on them. So there are various kinds of cases that we have and sometimes women burn themselves. But if you really look into why they burn themselves, you find that it's because of domestic dispute or many reasons like that. You yourself, what did you do to become an empowered woman who's doing something uh, in a, you know, strong role what you're doing now in this program like w how can other women use you as an example by you telling how you got to this point I think how I got to this point as a Nepali woman is also because of the support I got from my family it is very important for a Nepali woman to have that kind of support uh, in place if she's ever to move ahead in life and I got that support from my parents I got that support from my husband I got that support from all my family and I was privileged enough to get a good education, uh, which, uh, by good education, I mean a decent education, you know, which also made me feel, and as a woman, I never felt discriminated. When I was growing up, I never felt discriminated. And in fact, that's how Sati started. We felt that we were seven, eight friends who we got together and we said that we've had the privileges of being a normal woman, a global woman, whatever. But a lot of Nepali women didn't have those privileges, so we felt we needed to speak out against all the atrocities that women were facing. Uh, why we selected domestic violence as an issue to work on was also because no one else was speaking about it. There was this silence around domestic violence. You were not meant to speak out against it. You were meant to tolerate it. That's how we were. Uh, a lot of Nepali women are brought up to tolerate domestic violence. So that is a thing that we had to break. And we saw a lot of that around us and women being silent. So we felt that this was an issue that needed the silence around it to be broken. I fell in love with an Irish man, a foreigner, and then I started having trouble again with the family because they want me to get married with a, a local a businessman in Nepali, a, a Hindu, whatever, you know, what every parents think of. For their, for their kids basically and what I didn't, I was stuck in my decision I was like no, this is my decision, my life. Yeah. <laughs>